Uh, welcome to our used 2014 KZ Spree 323 RLS. Starting right in the back center here. You get your power inlet. So as you open up this cord, you're gonna find a little notch in the bottom center, or top center. You're gonna line up with that notch there. Press them in together. Little eighth turn to lock it down. Then you get the threaded collar in the back there to properly lock it into place. This little compartment here, as you open that up, you get that little switch. That's just for your rear stabilizer. Press and hold extend until it comes down, contacts the ground. You hear a bit of a whine on the motor. So just let go of it then and that'll be it set. It does not level the unit, it just equalizes. So if you're, get, if you're using it, you wanna make sure your level, your unit is starting from about as level as possible. So we've got these little levels here for you so you can check that. Down underneath it, you get a cable and satellite inlet. Coax cables plug into the respective ports, fire up at your TV location. On the end of your bumper here, you just pull that cap out of there, reach in, you'll find your sewer hose. Take note of those two gears and the adapter here, so I'll be hooking it up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the back bumper back here, help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things that bit fresher. Making our way down the side here, you're gonna find your kind of water inlet system right here. So you get that little service light so you can see what you're doing. Down, down right here is your flash tank flush valve. So you may notice over time after having gone and dumped your black tank, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically it's just some debris inside of the tank hanging between the probes. So what you'll do is just plug into here with your water hose, open up your black valve that'll show you in a second, turn on the water and that'll flush out that tank for you. Right beside it's your city water connection. Same water hose will plug into here, turn on the water and that'll pressurize the lines throughout the unit. Down underneath it is your exterior shower. So you can just get this little quick connect here. So as you push that back, your water hose will plug into there. Just push it in hard, let it lock into place and that's your hose then connected. Hot and cold water there, of course. Once you're done, just closing it back off. Down underneath it all is your sewer system. So that cap there, if you just kind of press on it, give it a turn, it'll pop on out of there. It's got the same ears that your sewer hose had. Over on the side here, you get your two valves. So on the left is a gray, on the right is a black. Black valves controlling your black tank. Black tank is filled from your toilet. So it's of course gonna be your dirtiest water. So we'll dump that first. Once that's done, you can then do the gray. Gray tank is filled from your sinks as well as your shower. So typically cleaner water, we'll dump that last to help keep that sewer hose as clean as possible. Towards the front, you get one under your storage compartment here. So as you open that up, you get that little finger on the left side there, holds it open for you. Inside of here, you'll find your water hose. Inside of the water hose, you'll find your park adapter. So your 30 amp short cord into there, 15 amp to a standard household outlet. Your shower hose right here. So this is the end that you'd be connecting into that bit that we showed, just shown you. And then the other end, it's just a standard garden hose end. So if you wanted to attach something to it, you can. This guy right here is the manual override for all of your stabilizer jacks. So once we get to the other side, I'll be able to show you the end of the shaft where you would attach to. Slam latches on all your doors. So you just kind of slam them shut and they close. This is your battery box here. So your battery is housed right inside of there. As long as you're plugged into that short cord in the back or your seven pin to your tow vehicle, that battery is charging for you. These knobs, if you loosen them off, push them back. You can access your propane tanks for the video. I'm just going to pull this right off. Then you can see in the back, you get a changeover. The arrow's currently pointing over here, and I believe it's currently let us know what we've got propane. So, we're running off of this tank, we've got propane. If it were to go red, it's letting you know you no longer have any propane. You would close that one off, flip the arrow to this tank, and run off of this one while you get the other one filled. Okay. Tongue jack in front. You get the light switch on the right, up. Turns it on, and up is up, down is down. Other side here, you get the other end of your storage compartment. Same sort of slam latch there, pop it on open. Inside of here, up on that front wall, you get that little service light there, as well as this light switch here. That light switch has some front steer lights on the front of the unit for you. Inside of here on the right side, you also get that stabilizer switch. This is for your front stabilizer jack. And then where you would manually override your stabilizer jacks is just right on this shaft right there. And just be attaching onto that and you can turn it up and down so again the slam latch just closes itself this front entry door here so as you open this up you get this slide out switch right there so i'm just going to do that right now just because it does that closet there and it does close off the bedroom from the rest of the unit so just for the sake of floor once it's of flow once we get inside we'll just have this opened up right now once it's fully extended we're just going to hear some clicks from the motors letting us know they've reached their stall Just like that. At the door, you do have this little T-latch, so that would slide into there. It just holds it open for you. Service port for your fridge here. Nothing really there for you to worry about. It is just service and event. Right down below it, you get GFI protected outlet, as well as your cable and satellite outlets. So if you're looking to have TV outside, you got the power to do so. This right here is the exhaust for your furnace. So if you're ever running a furnace, you just want to make sure it's not locked off. It does get hot. 
Straight up from there, you'll find your two exterior speakers, porch light right in between them, and your stove vent right under, right kind of underneath it all. So of course, propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it, so you wanna make sure that your fan inside is turned on to help evacuate those fumes, and this flap here open just to give them somewhere to go. Once you're done, just kind of press it into place, it'll click, and that'll prevent any dust from kicking up in there during travel. Hot water tank down underneath it, you got that keyway there, you just line that up and you can pop it on open. Your control for turning it on with propane is just inside of the unit. Turning it on with electricity is a little switch right down here. Before turning it on with either source, you just want to hit this relief valve right there. You should get some water coming out of that relief valve. If you're not getting any water out of there, there is a chance that it's empty and you do run the risk of burning out your elements. So you just want to make sure that it's full before you go firing it up. Once you're done, just lining up that keyway, lock it back down. Fresh water inlet right here. You pop that cap out, water hose will stick into there, turn on the water and that'll fill up your fresh water tank. You drain for that tank, it's kind of right in between the axes, I believe, actually. Uh, nope. Where is it? It's right behind this wheel. So it's just a little valve there. Just turn that to open it up and it drains itself out. So I'll just let that go for a minute here. Same T latch for your back door to hold that open. And then right in the back of the unit, you do get your ladder there so you can get up top and check all your seals. So now we'll make our way inside of the unit. Your assist handle here just up at 90 degrees and it falls into place so we can open up the door. For your steps, you're just going to grab that handle, pull it straight on out, flip that last step over, and we can come inside. First things first, right on the right there, you do get your fire extinguisher. That's standard. Pull the pin, point, and shoot. Right underneath the cabinet from there, you got your light switches. The one on the right here, the one that you can't really see turn on any lights, does your awning light. That is in the head of your awning, so we'll show you that in a minute here. The one in the center does your interior lights. The one on the left does your porch light outside. Your awning is on this switch here. Press and hold extend and that awning will make its way out. Once that awning is fully extended, we're gonna see the light flapping down as well as the gray metal tube. Once you see that, you're gonna stop. Wind itself up backwards, in which case the fabric will be underneath the tube and the line is going to hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. So we can't quite get all the way out today, but you can just see that flap coming down right now. Right. Now, if it were to start raining, it's of course going to hold some water anyway. So, what you can do is grab either arm front or rear. It just has this little quick pin there. You're going to press in on that. Then you can pull that arm down and in and just keep going until you achieve the tilt level that you like. And then that'll allow, that would allow water to then run off. You have the same system up front, so you can do the same thing up there if you like to get more shade. Before you bring it back in though, you want to make sure these guys are back out straight and fully extended, just so you're not running the risk of bending your arms. Then we can press and hold the track, the awning will make its way back in. And just to give you an idea of where that uh, awning light would be, you can kind of just see that black little strip right on the end of the awning tube there, just on the right side. It's basically just along that line. So with your awning coming back in, again, you just want to make sure that your fabric is over top of the tube. And you just want to make sure that once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you're bringing it back in because again, you do run the risk of bending your arms just because it catches all that wind. Right beside your awning switch is your slide out switch. Press and hold out, the slide will make its way out. It works the exact same as the one up front. Once it's fully extended, we'll hear some clicks. storage down here just kind of wide open along the back same sort of wide open storage little lights underneath here as well just on their own switches take note of the orientation of the recliners right now so just because of how close this slide comes to this chair you do need to have it sideways like this just so that it clears of course once you're set up camping you flip it around and put it wherever you like it open storage here into the slide out your light switches over on the left side here does all the top lights just wide open storage across the top. This binder here has all of your owner's manuals in it, any remotes, any keys, anything like that, you're gonna find right in there. This couch here does fold out. You take your two back cushions and throw them off to the side. And then the handle right in the front and center here. Pull up on that, flip these two legs out. And then up and out. Your back cushion then flips over. And there's your bed. Once you're done, just flipping up that back, pick up the foot, flip the legs back in. 
then it just folds in half, falls into place. This window back here is an emergency exit. You're taking your two handles, flip them up, swing the whole window out, hop on out. Light in the center here, just got its push button right in the side. In the dinette, you can see you currently just got it set up, right? You can also take the table here, it does extend out, right? Same open storage across the top there. Entertainment area, so you get your storage on the top. There's your remote and your, sorry, your remotes for the TV and the stereo. TV mount there. Over on the side here, you get your antenna outlet. And then your satellites, you can see they've got been labeled by the previous owner. Power outlet, as well as your AV cables, which are hooked into your stereo. Pretty straightforward there, power button, volume. Speaker set A is your inside set, B is your outside set, and C is your bedroom, I believe. More storage down below. In the kitchen, you've got your open storage on the end here. Right above the sink is a little light, just on its own switch. All right, mobile head. Comes out, you do have the shower head feature there as well. Hot and cold water, of course. Sink covers are just soft plastic, so nothing hot on them. More storage space here. If you're looking to winterize the unit yourself once it comes time, your water pump is right there. And hot oh, water tank is right here. Microwave up top, pretty straightforward, just like home. Down underneath it, you get your range vent, light switch on the left, down on the right. Previous owner made the little cover for the sink. It is just plastic though, so again, nothing hot up there and making sure that this guy's cool off before you use it. For the stove, you're gonna turn it over to light. You got a lighter, fires right up. Once you're done, just turning it all off. And like I said, just letting it cool down before sticking this guy back on it. For the oven, you just flip that open, turn your knob there over to that little pilot. And then right in the back, get that pilot light going. Once you have it going, you just hold that knob in for another few seconds and you can release and the flame will hold itself. Turn up to your desired temperature and she fires right up. Once you're done, you can turn it back down just to pilot. It'll hold just the pilot light for you. But if you're traveling or leaving the unit, you just want to make sure it's right off. Return air for your furnace here. Fridge is right above it. Power button on the left there. Press that, that'll turn it on. Mode, so starting from A, that's automatic, of course. Power, the uh, little plug there means that we're running off 120 volt power. If you hit mode, it'll come out of auto and just 120 volt, and then it can come into that little drop, which means look at propane. So if you wanted to run it out on solely just propane, you're gonna have that come over to there. It'll fire up just on propane. Mode again after that, it comes back to auto, just kind of cycles around. Temp selection on the right side. To turn it off, press and hold. Fridge down low and freezer up top. A little bit of pantry space here. Power converter is right down underneath it. Press the top and center to pop it on open. All of your breakers in the middle. Whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the center. So just turn it off and then back on to reset it. All of your fuses are on the right side. Whenever a fuse pops, you'll get a little red LED right beside it. Let me know exactly which one went. LP detector is right beside it. Propane heavier than air. It sits on the floor. That guy detects it. It starts going off just like a smoke detector would. Smoke detector is kind of right in the center here, right by your light. And there we go. Your antenna right here. So you're just turning this knob to bring it up all the way. Once it's up all the way, it'll just kind of stop in place. Just like that. And then you can pull down, just kind of turn it around, looking for your best signal. Wherever you find it, you can leave it there. Before traveling or before bringing it down, you just want to make sure these two arrows there are lined up. And then as you bring it down, it just ensures that the antenna sits inside of its channel properly. Now your thermostat. So of course, temp selection across the top there. Right? For fan, you're typically going to be leaving that in auto and just use high or low. Unless, of course, you're looking to just move some air around, then you can select your high or low fan. Slider all the way over to the right. It's going to be heat. Select your temperature. Turns on the furnace. The furnace is moving its air through these little portals they have kind of throughout the units. Center left, you get fan. So that'll turn off the furnace and turn on your air conditioning fan. The air conditioner will slide that far left and that'll come into cool. Select your temperature. That'll turn on the air conditioner. 
two different options to your air conditioner. You can have these louvers here closed, in which case you'd be using all of our ceiling ducting to move the air, or you can open them up and it just dumps all of its air into the living room here. So when you first get out to your campsite, you want these open, cool off this area as quickly as possible, then you can close them and start moving the air throughout. Once we're done, just turning it off, through this door into the bathroom, light switch is right up on the left side there. Toilet, as you flip that open, you get your flushers, just a little handheld thing on the right side. Up the wall from there, you get your monitor panel. So on the bottom left, you have your water pump switch. So as you turn that on, turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. Water heater and on gas in the center. So as you turn that switch on, you get that little red light there, letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that sequence is started, that light's gonna go out. It's gonna try that three times. If after the third try, it hasn't fired up, this light's gonna come on and stay on. At that point, just off and back on to reset it. Water heater on electricity is on the right side. Turn that on, fires it up to electricity. Monitor systems, so battery there, you can see we're currently C for charging, G would be good, F is fair, L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, goes to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. Medicine cabinets here. Geo probably protect it out, look by the sink, so test on the left, reset in the center. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. A bit of storage underneath your sink, as well as hot and cold water, of course. In the shower, you get the standard head and hose, hot and cold water, simple as that. Right above our heads here is your roof vent, so as you turn that open, you can see the previous owner did install max airs, so you do have the ability to leave this open during rain. The van's just in the back corner there. So here's the slide out, that is your closet that we opened to start. You can see you just got that open space there. And then coming into the bedroom, your lights just on their own switches. Again, just open storage. And a little drawer. Closet space on either side of the bed. As well as a little light up in the bed as well and just more storage if you pick up the foot of your bed you do get access to a little storage compartment and then here you also see the tv there of course goes to the tv location and then just coming down the wall this is that front entry door that we were in earlier there's a slide out switch from it and more open storage there and then your antenna outlets right on the end here, turning that antenna on is just that switch there. Will also help clear up your stereo signal. 12 volt outlet if you were to have a 12 volt TV, satellite outlet, and then a 120 volt outlet. Last little light right here, and then the roof vent here. So the, the max air that's been installed over this one is a black one, so you do kind of keep the darkness in here for sleep. And I do believe that's about it. If you've got any other questions on a unit, please feel free to give us a call, 204-237-7272.